that was that was kind of our thing. Yeah, that that would had to be a great moment for you, where just everything came to fruition and it, <laughs> the program fell together yeah. right at the right time. Yeah, I mean, I vividly remember in practice because I mean, Duconto was the guy. He had won the year before. Still the guy, still the guy in Europe, and I remember, I remember vividly um, getting behind him in practice and on the straightaway, like gaining on him. You know, like every little gear, like I gained, you know, a few feet on him, and I'm like, dude, like I got it. I got the power. The go kart feels good, and I'm catching, you know, the guy, you know, but at an alarming rate. And like, you know, and I know. You know, at this point in time in practice, everyone's pushing because, you know, it's like second to last practice. It's it's, it's not everyone's fiddle farting around at this point. Like everyone's on it and got their probably their, their best stuff on by now. And uh, I remember coming off the track and just looking at the mechanic and uh, it was an Italian mechanic. And I guess the translation would have been like, dude, we got it. Like, don't we don't need to we don't need to worry about anything. I think we can win this weekend. And we ended up doing, I mean, we, I got ran over in the last heat by my teammate of all people. And that, that made us start in, in seventh. And I, and I actually ran over my hand. I had a hairline fracture in my hand. It was all swollen up and, you know, go-kart was destroyed Saturday night. But I, I just knew I was really, I mean, I've never had the feeling and in my career, but Sunday morning we did the warm up. And like I knew I was the only guy in used tires, second best time, and I was just driving around like easy, you know, just like it was everything was just working so flawlessly. And it was funny, I've never said this in my life to anyone, but uh first Mike Speed came up to me, he's like, How you doing, bud? And you know, I heard your hand and everything. I'm like I'm like, I'm gonna win, Mike. I, I just looked at him and said, I'm gonna win today. And Michael, I'm like, I'm going to win today. I don't give a sh- I don't care what anyone says. I'm winning today. I, I have what it- I had everything to win today. And I've never said anything like that. I mean, and I never even really thought that. I was always, you know, we always find the guy like, okay, I got to figure out how not to lose the race or, you know, like, but I, I was, and then the owner of IPK, uh, Peter Patrick came up and he's like, Gary, I just want to let you know, like, you have done enough. I want you as a driver for next year. You're signed. If you want to be with us, you know, full season, I want you on my team. And I, and I look, he's like, you don't have to race if your hands, you know, a hand hurts too much. Cause I kept the practice. Like I did five, six classes. My hand was ballooned up and everything. And I looked, I'm like, no, I'm winning. I'm winning today. I'm winning. And I, <laughs> good thing I did. Cause I would look like a total, total dweeb <laughs> if I didn't. After after saying something stupid like that, I mean, it's really some stupid thing to say. But um, but yeah, it was good. I mean, that's it solidified my ride, you know, and it got me a ride over at IPK for for two seasons. So any um, big yeah, any so big I, memories after, from IPK? Yeah, that was huge huge part of my life. Huge part of my life um, in the sense of. Unfortunately, unfortunately, after that race in Vegas, we were still on the IAMI products and they had a new homologation with that new IAMI engine. And unfortunately, the old IAMI engine, obviously, we won Vegas with it. I mean, it was very strong, won a, won a lot of races. And, and I'm thinking of going into the next season, like, man, I'm, this is it. This is, this is going to be the year where I can do it in Europe, too, you know. And IAMI came out with their new engine for the homologation and it just wasn't there. It, it didn't have that edge. The TM and the Vortexes were far superior to the IAMI product, and we kind of lost out that whole year, you know, running the IAMI, IAMI engine, and we were just always kind of down on power. And it was a difficult – and, uh, again, another really difficult year. Um, of, you know, no bad results and not getting the results that we thought we could. And, and it, was just, it was just a tough – tough season and then um the year after that what happened now now i gotta date back was that i was there a year two years right yeah that was uh is that when you got locked out of 16 (laughs) 
No, yeah, yeah, you can see I said it. Well, yeah, so we're at 2016, tough year there. Um, but I mean, great experience in the sense of working in, in a cart factory now full time, um, and actually working on racing carts because at CRG, when I was working in the factory full time, I was mostly working on rental carts. So I was basically two that year at IPK, I mean, I was the race team. I was the guy who <laughs> was building all the carts, loading all the trailers. I mean, I was doing absolutely everything, which in turn I felt, you know, was a bit too much. I mean, I was already showing up to the races, like exhausted, you know, being, I had to do all this stuff and all the other drivers would show up, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed and ready to go. Well, <laughs> and then complain that their go-kart was not put together. Right. You know, so I was like, man, this kind of sucks. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I had, had, had a rough year there. And then the second year they uh, decided they were going to start sending me to some races in, in the U S while doing the races in Europe. So I did the Florida winter tour for the very first time, but the whole, the whole Florida winter tour with Marco DeLeo. And that went really well. We actually ended up winning the championship with the rock shifter, which it was kind of like one of my bucket list things. I always thought like, you know, I never did the Florida winter tour in the States and it'd be cool to win it. So it was nice to, to win that championship the first one and only time that, that I did it. And then, um, did some races with Greg Bell at the, in the schools championship. And, uh, actually during one of the races that I did over in Newcastle, and this is, the, it, well, I guess I should back up, um, before I, I tell that story in the sense of IPK had, um, employed some other drivers and one of the drivers was Jeremy Inglesis who I personally think is probably one of the best teammates that I've ever had uh, being one a person and a driver himself to be honest um, in working with him because they had me started doing a lot of mechanicing jobs at the races that I weren't wasn't racing in and they actually when we were doing the German championships with Jeremy they would send me down and I'd be the mechanic slash team manager slash everything. I'd be tuning the cart and, and everything. And they, they would send me down with, you know, two, three go-karts and they, you know, the engineers, I guess they just didn't want to go to those races because they weren't big enough races. I mean, even though a German championship is just like a European championship, all the big teams are there and all the big drivers and everything. But it was the first race that they sent me down there with Jeremy and naturally, I mean, I'm going down there thinking like, you know, this sucks. We're going to a race at a track that the world championships is going to be at. Like, and everyone's there because they, you know, want to race at that track before they go to the world championships, obviously. And I'm, I'm sitting here as my teammates mechanic, like this, this kind of sucks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but naturally like everything I do, I'm like, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'll do it at 100%. And all the engineers, they sent us down there with three go-karts. And they told us one go kart, like you, we're just going to send down there as a spare, but you you will not use that go kart. That go kart's no good. And I thought it was strange. So I'm looking at, you know, I know the model of the go kart. I'm like, that's in my opinion the best one we got. But who am I to say, right? Um, so we go down there, and Jeremy, like I said, is probably one of the best drivers that I've ever worked had the pleasure to work with as a teammate, and then now as a mechanic. <laughs> Uh, and, and a tuner, so to speak. And uh, I'm watching, like, actually, that race, you know, the first couple couple sessions, I've never really watched, watched him because I was on the track with him, but I'm watching him like, God, this guy is good. And kind of made me rethink, like, you know, like, if this guy's this good. I know, I don't think I'm th as good as him. Like, why am I driving if I'm not as even, you know, why, why am I continuing wanting to drive if I'm not as good as, you know, this guy right here? Um. And so I kind of got into the mechanic thing, you know, thinking, okay, yeah, I got a really good driver. Let's try to make, you know, the product better and everything being that I'm employed by this, by this company. And we're, we're struggling. We're struggling. Um, we got nothing really going for us. I mean, Jeremy's on the phone with the engineers and I'm basically just acting as a parts changer, right? The engineers say, do this, do that, you know, uh, and they're kind of tuning it over the phone. And by the end of the practice day, and we tried two carts, all these excellent made jobs. I tried everything, everything, right? That they that these engineers want us to try. And we're slow. I mean, Jeremy is not a driver that, you know, should be driving around, you know, in seventeenth place. Hello? 
You there? Uh, yes. So J- Jeremy is, is not a driver that should be driving around 17th place by any means. You know, like we're like 17th place at best. And and the engineers are like, well, you know, we're not there. Um, maybe it's the engines and they're kind of just, you know, in my eyes, kind of just blowing it off and like, you know, maybe Jeremy's not driving right or this, that, because those go-karts we know are good. And I looked at Jeremy and I go, okay, we're here alone. What what if we just do something crazy and you let me take over? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm taking that go-kart that they told us we will not drive and I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the axle. I'm going to change the seat. I'm going to change the right height. I'm going to change the cast. I'm going to change pretty much everything. And he's like, whoa, what? Da, da, da. I'm like, what, what have we got? The What's the worst we got that can happen when we're slow now? I mean, and I'll take the blame for it. I mean, I'll just say I, I decided to do it and he was kind of a passive aggressive guy anyways. And he's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, what is the worst thing? Happen? So I stayed there for like 10 o'clock at night, rebuilding a whole new go-kart, doing all the stuff. And, and even Jeremy, he's like, yeah, man, you're pretty good at doing all this stuff, you know, like uh, mechanical work. And he, he's like, I like how you take the time to make the, you know, the steering and all this stuff. Some mechanics don't do that. I'm like, oh, you know, like I'm a driver. I, I, I know how I like this stuff. Long story short, we show up for the morning, you know, everything brand new. And, like, we're kind of looking at each other right before I push him off. He's, you know, he's, he, he likes to joke and stuff. He's like, what What if it's really fast, man? What if it's really fast? You know, kind of joking around. I'm like, hey, we don't, we'll see. We'll see. So we push him off. And, like, the first time he goes by, it's in Wackersdorf, Germany, and right where the mechanics stand. It's, like, a really fast first corner, like six geared, almost flat out. And you can really see the go-kart, how it works. And there's a heavy braking zone right in front of you and everything. And um, he goes flying by like an anger the first time. And like, I'm like, fine, that's it. That's it. Like we're, that, that's looking better, you know? And like every lap's getting better. He's getting used to it. And we're like second quick, second quick all of a sudden, you know, we've gained three, three tenths on where we were before, which I know in, in maybe the States seems like, oh, that's not much, but three tenths in Europe literally puts you from, 25th to in the race, you know, like being able to win the race. So we're like, I'm like stoked, right? Like, you know, like almost like winning, you know, like if I was second quick in the race, you know, put the card on the stand. And with Jeremy, even though he was French from American, we always speak Italian to each other. And I guess it's like the, the translations, like, you know, dude, like, I guess you know what you're doing, you know, <laughs> or, you got, or you got lucky. And then there was a couple more races. We did the same thing with Jeremy, like, and I did it with Chilenta, Francesco Chilenta. We were at a European championship race um, for KZ2, and KZ2 was not the same weekend as my category. So they used me as a mechanic because Chilenta's mechanic couldn't make it for whatever reason. And um, naturally, being a European championship race, all the engineers were there and everything. You know, and I was, you know, deemed as the mechanic. You know, I just do whatever the engineer says and make sure nothing falls off the go kart. And Francesco came off the track and he was telling me what he was doing and everything. It was, you know, naturally, naturally um, curious about how things are going, what he thinks and stuff. And then he tells the engineers, and we're all, you know, in the roundtable discussion, and they're like, okay, you need to lower the back of the car. And I'm thinking to myself, like, no, dude, like, what he just said, we need to do a complete opposite. I'm like, no, I'm not going to lower back the car. And then, okay, they lower back the car and they all go away. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to act, I'm going to act stupid and say, oh, I thought you meant lower the axle, actually raising the car, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and be, granted, like this, the, the session before, he was like fifth, sixth quick, you know, tenth and a half off. And, uh, you know, good, but not nothing great, you know, nothing yeah. spectacular. So, you know, I, I do my change, you know, opposite of what the engineers say. He goes out there, you know, no one probably, you know, overlooks at your shoulder to make sure you did it right and everything because, granted, I've been doing mechanic work, you know, the last three months now, and everyone started to joke that I was a better mechanic than a driver. And, you know, at first, you know, it was kind of a joke, and then it, it, after a while it started becoming evident maybe I was a better mechanic tuner than, than a driver. And... um and so, yeah, made that change. He goes out P1. like but, And I had everyone in by, you know, a tenth and a half or something like that. And, uh, and then they come in, and then the engineer sees, like, oh, what the heck, man? You, you did it wrong. And, and then Francesco, before the guy can even 